Dr. Prophet has given his first ever AMA on a YouTube channel. And that one was on a smaller German YouTube channel in German language. And because the rest of the world is probably not speaking or understanding English, Captain Vivi, the owner of this channel, has asked me to put together an AMA in English language. And I think that's a great idea and I want to condense this AMA to the best of my capabilities for you guys. Hey everyone, it's the patient toddler coming at you with another video and this type of video is one that I've never done before and I will try to bring this recap of the Dr. Prophet AMA to you as condensed as possible and as neutral as possible as I only want to give the information to you that has been passed by the guys in the AMA. But before we start, please keep in mind that neither I nor is Dr. Profit a financial advisor, so please do your own research before you ape full degen into the Ecomi token and or the Vivi collectibles. Also, if you enjoy this type of content, this video and the effort that went into it, please make sure to smash a like under this video so that as many people as possible can see this one. And with that out of the way, let's get already started. So before we go to the first question that has been asked on the AMA, I really want to outline why I do this and why it's important that we hear what Dr. Prophet has to say. And in my opinion, there are a couple of reasons for that. First of all, Dr. Prophet is the biggest VV whale with over 17,000 collectibles and a ton of Omi in his bag. Secondly, Dr. Profit is a successful entrepreneur from Europe that has his own company and therefore probably is capable of judging processes and behavior within another company in the digital space. Also, Dr. Profit is very close to the VV team, not a member of the VV team, but has already met Dan and David and some other people when he went to some of the VV events and had this famous dinner with David Yu and Ron English. So in my opinion, these are a couple of reasons. If you count them all together, it's a very interesting person to hear the opinion on, especially in the times in which we are right now. So make sure you stick around until the end of this video to learn a little bit more about how Dr. Profit feels about, for example, interoperability, the NFTs right now, the development of augmented reality and metaverse of the entire space and some other interesting facts and thoughts that, that he is giving in this AMA. So the first questions are not related directly to Ecomi and Vivi, but more to the person, Dr. Profit and who he is. And he is basically given the information that he is originally from Germany, born and raised in Germany, that he is from Frankfurt and that he has lived uh, profession wise in the UK before he moved himself to Portugal, where he claims that he is pretty happy and doesn't miss a lot of things except German bread, German beer and German infrastructure. Now, the second question he was asked is how he got into Ecomi and Vivi and he also went on to add how he got into crypto. And first thing he outlined here is that he is only doing something investment wise when he has high conviction because if you wouldn't have high conviction then you are very likely to sell your investments too early. Secondly, he also said that he found the Ecomi token first and then only after that via some Reddit tweets, he also got into the Vivi app in March 2021. As many of us also felt, he describes that Vivi was able to reignite the fire of collecting and the memories of the childhood collecting that almost every one of us has in them and so he found something that reminded him of for example collecting coca-cola cans or some football cards now that he was traveling so much and living abroad he said that it's only a natural development for him to have digital collecting because then you can always take your stuff with you even if you are moving from one home to another he said that the physical collections that he had 
he has basically lost or given up along the way, moving from one country or one home to another. He continues that he is also a big fan of Marvel and Star Wars from childhood on, that he has basically gotten into Star Wars by going into the cinema uh, for episode five or six, and that he is a big believer in the development of augmented reality and that basically his passions for uh, Marvel, Star Wars and what he has experienced as a childhood collector before and augmented reality and Vivi, everything is basically merging together and pretty much fitting for him. He also believes that augmented reality is going to improve by a lot and cites the GQ interview from Tim Cook where the Apple CEO Tim Cook is also referring to the merging of the physical and the digital world. Dr. Prophet says that one day we might have, for example, normal Ray-Ban glasses with the implementation or capability of seeing augmented reality digital collectibles and so on. For Dr. Prophet, uh, the smartphone will come soon to an end of life and be substituted by augmented reality. Not the heavy goggles that we have right now, but really comfortable glasses that you then can use, for example, for indoor navigation or conversations with people from another language as he uses those examples to explain all the positive things that he is seeing to come for the space of augmented reality. His next point is obviously the deficits of the current technology uh, where the goggles are really heavy, the battery packs are still uh, with too much weight and you would still have a lot of delay to the current goggles uh, so that you cannot stream right away into the goggles. But he thinks that with the development and advancement from 5G to 6G, from uh, Wi-Fi 6 to Wi-Fi 7 and so on, that this all, all these limiting factors will continuously go away and make room for this new way of appreciating augmented reality. They continue to refer to the development of the mobile phone into a smartphone and the development of going from normal mail to email, where a resistance of the people was strong in the beginning, as for example, the uh, initial mobile phones were first of all really heavy and secondly, according to Dr. Prophet, who has lived in that time, actually uh, said only for very important people or drug dealers. That was the opinion at the time, as it seems. And um, the other example that they brought was that why would you need email via internet when you can have normal mail into your mailbox? They basically go a little bit on here and talk about um, how these revolutionary developments took a while to take foot in the society. Captain Vivi then asks how long Dr. Prophet thinks it would take to uh, get into mainstream, to have that mainstream mass adoption for those augmented reality headsets or goggles or augmented reality glasses. And his response is that it depends on the form factor in the first place, but also on the price point. And he believes that uh, as people are already willing to spend $1,000 on a smartphone at the moment, that once the technology is comfortable enough, it will quickly uh, substitute the smartphones, even though that the price point of these augmented reality goggles by Apple maybe is still around three and a half thousand dollars so significantly above a normal smartphone. But as prices decrease, that people will adopt it quicker and he thinks that it will take overall five to ten years so that a hundred million maybe 500 million people will be using these augmented reality glasses next question for dr prophet was if he's already in the master collector program if you already got access and the answer is yes he already got the access uh, he has between one and two million points achieved rank 63 out of the 100 possible and according to his own calculations he believes that he will achieve rank 100 the maximum rank within one year the next question was one with a lot of potential because he gets asked what he thinks needs improvement within the vv app 
And he answers that in two points. First of all, he sees a lack of social interaction and social chat in the VV app. And secondly, he wants to see in the future shared experience and persistency of the digital collectibles so that when you load your collectible into the augmented reality outside world, that whenever you're looking at that specific spot, that it stays there, doesn't have to be loaded and doesn't have to recalibrate it. And he believes that there will be at some point that huge technology jump that will enable this thing that when you are using your augmented reality glasses and you come to a house of someone else that you can see the collectibles right away and do not have to calibrate or place them first to, to be able to make that experience. The next question is the one that probably everyone has been waiting for and that is that we experience at the moment so much FUD out there in the community on social media how he feels about people raising these concerns about the FUD that is going out there and how he feels about the Vivi team with the breaching of timelines and broken promises. Dr. Prophet's answer to that is first of all that it's a fair point and that there is a lot of FUD out there and there's also a lot of legitimate criticism out there. However, he points out that there's also very loud FUD out there of people that have already sold and just want to see the project suffer. However, he says that he would be the wrong person to ask about uh, criticizing or judging on timelines as he as an entrepreneur with his company has been already many times on the other side of the table where, where they had to justify these timelines breached by them and therefore he would not go into that position to now judge the Vivi team for the breach timelines. He also thinks that while the app was going through a very big growth during the last bull run, they have piled on some technical debt in the development to make certain things happen within the bull run. They have created this technical debt and now they have to work through it. And as a chance, Dr. Prophet sees the current bear market that we have experienced in the last year, that that was the optimal chance or is the optimal chance to work through the stuff and actually build. He sees a technical improvement in the way that they are rolling out new features. As examples, he is giving the implementation of the waitlist system in the back end, which is not available to the users right now. And he also says that with the new product manager, Mitch, um, there is actually the possibility now to have many processes running in parallel and that everything looks more structured to him. He also comments a little bit on the competition. So he sees that many projects had found the point where they would target specifically things that Vivi had in rollout but didn't publish yet, such as in the time that we did not have the cash out that projects were implementing a cash out from the beginning and then pointing finger at Vivi and saying, hey, look guys, we have cash out and they don't and we have rankings and Vivi doesn't have rankings and so on. So he basically said that if you are not the first mover, you can quickly capitalize on what you have already seen, what another community is demanding and that some of these projects have taken on actually too many licenses that they purchase or other things so that they would be actually in financial trouble whereas Vivi with a very bootstrap budget has done a pretty good performance in his eyes. In that part he also acknowledges that uh, communication wise not everything was perfect that that could certainly have been better but he hopes that with improvements like Omi to NFT and the begin of the Viviverse by the end of the year and some other milestones that the Vivi fam or that everyone there can look back onto the app, onto the year and look back at the year as a successful one. The next question is regarding interoperability and Captain Vivi asks here why Dr. Prophet thinks that they did not implement interoperability, even though it was already promised in the beginning of 2021, so more than two years ago. And Dr. Prophet 
goes in with a very interesting point and he says you need to differentiate between self-custody and interoperability and points out that self-custody does mean that you can take care of your collectibles, put them on a hardware wallet, for example, or put them into your MetaMask wallet, but not necessary. It does mean that you can take your collectible between one and another metaverse and that these collectibles, especially car collectibles, are working in specific games the way that they would in another game like that they are damaged in a race when you crash them into a wall or that the tires are spinning. He adds to this that at the moment there is no general metaverse standard in which models are built and that it would be necessary to negotiate between Vivi and the licensor and the game publisher to really make these collectibles uh, work in a specific other game or other metaverse. For normal figures without motion, he more or less sees that it could be already there, but um, not for the more complex collectibles. Captain Vivi goes here a little bit deeper and asks again about self-custody in specific. And Dr. Prophet says right away that he was always a big fan of self-custody, that he also demands it that he actually demanded it since the bull run and that many of the Vivi users were not really um, convinced of self-custody or not really interested in self-custody until the big collapses of the, in the crypto space happened. And then many people were interested in self-custody and asking more for self-custody. And he gives some interesting examples. One of the examples would be that you own a painting but you cannot get it out of the bank, so you cannot take it into custody and therefore it would be then at the bank and you cannot um, have the benefits at your home and for yourself. And then he goes on to an even better example in his opinion and that is Bitcoin, that the value of Bitcoin is largely because you can self-custody Bitcoin and that the price point is currently at $30,000 at the time of that AMA and the reason for that is that instead of just being able to send it between Binance and Kraken, you can actually also send it to your cold wallet or to whatever other wallet and really use it on your own, custody it on your own and transfer it out wherever you want to. He sees the value of the collectibles being defined as also the value of Bitcoin by the possibility of self-custody, which he says is not a must-do, but something that you should be able to do. And he also thinks that the very low-cost collectibles of Vivi can stay on Vivi for every user, that that shouldn't be a problem to let them there, but the higher value collectibles, that they should be able to be transferred out of the app. He adds that he also believes that it will definitely come uh, to the Vivi collectibles, although he doesn't believe that it will come for all the collectibles at the same time. And he especially thinks that it will have to be negotiated with each licensor and that some of the licensors might not want to be the first ones to try out to give self-custody to their collectibles. He says that he can wait for it, that he can wait a longer time, but he wants to know that it's still on the roadmap and that it's still coming he wants to have the affirmation that this is really happening. Captain Vivi continues to address all these more recent questions here from the community. And one of this question is if Vivi might have financial problems and therefore is looking for workforce more in the Asian region and also not paying the top salaries. And Dr. Prophet answers this question with several points. First of all, he claims that it's not necessary to overpay if you have a very good project and people are passionate about the project that you sometimes find the best people that really are interested in the project. 
and that not everyone can and not everyone should compete with the top salaries, for example, in the US that basically are then competing with Apple, with Google, that not everyone can and everyone has to do that. On the other hand, he says that a lot of development is done by Vivi in the Asian region. So it makes sense to also search for new people in the Asian region and also he adds that Vivi has a big part of decentralized uh, development in terms of design so that they are working with studios to do their designs. In that sense, the points that Dr. Profit is making are not concerning so much um, around the design, but rather the rest of the operation. And in summary, as mentioned in the beginning, he really says that as long as you have good incentives and a good project you do not have to overpay for developers with regards to the rest of the financial situation dr profit claims that if they would be in financial trouble then this would have already shown once payout was open for the us and the rest of the world and uh, the bank run could have already happened in that time as everyone had access to cash out um, that was willing to get their funds out and uh, it did not happen. He believes that they are sitting on enough cash. And even if Vivi was in financial trouble, he believes that um, he would rate Vivi as a unicorn. He would rate Vivi in a sense that they would be able to raise 10 or 20 million US dollars without any trouble if they need to fill a gap. He also thinks, even though that this is right now not the case, that Vivi could at any time get new venture capital in, that they could do other financing rounds to raise more capital. Although at the moment he believes that Vivi is not doing anything of this. Following up on the financial situation, Captain Vivi asks how he feels about the OTC deal that we have witnessed in the last month, because that also raised some speculations about the financial situation of Vivi and that they might be having these financial troubles and therefore have to do these OTC deals. And Dr. Profit answers that he first of all thinks that OTC deals of these Lohman collectibles are not the point that he wants to see or that, that should be happening in that manner, but rather that there should be a way to OTC purchase gems in large quantities because he thinks that the cash impossibilities at the moment are very limited and that people that want to load up large amounts or even institutions that want to come in and purchase larger quantities of collectibles are not able to get this specific liquidity and that credit cards, no matter how big the credit card limit is, will be maxed out at one point. So OTC purchase of large quantities of gems needs to be possible in his eyes. Dr. Profit points out that as long as there is no OMI to NFT, that there must be another way for institutions or larger whales to get this certain amount of gems to get the liquidity to purchase in the market as many, if not all credit cards will reach their limit eventually and will never have the credit card limit to not be maxed out in such a deal. What he doesn't want to see as pointed out in the beginning is that this is always just OTC deal of low mint collectibles. He's not a fan of that. He then also gets asked pretty good question in my opinion, if he would consider himself doing an OTC deal like that, or if he already has done an OTC deal like that. And the answer is that he has not done an OTC deal yet, but he knew already months before that this possibility would come one day. He had started a request for this possibility, but has never acted upon that. And um, he personally thinks that the biggest driver for him to do an OTC deal would be the cash in limitations so that you can purchase directly without financial limitations from the VV store. With regards to his portfolio, Dr. Profit adds here that he is focusing on first appearances of massive, of big characters 
where he sees that the value of these collectibles is basically guaranteed. And focusing on that, he could imagine an OTC deal. He would rather prefer to purchase massive amounts of gems and then look for good deals on the market than doing an OTC deal. The next question here is whether he prefers Ecomi as an investment or Vivi collectibles as an investment. And he points out that with regards to the safety, it's better to invest in Vivi collectibles as they are still around when Vivi would go bankrupt, which is then combined with the second point that there are many of the big brand first appearance characters like Star Wars characters that he thinks is worth focusing on. He thinks that with the investment in the Ecomi token, you are actually running a higher risk because you are dependent on the performance of Vivi itself to have the Ecomi token go up in value. And therefore he sees that maybe in the long run, the return on the Ecomi token is higher with this higher risk than for the Vivi collectibles. But on the other hand, if you would, for example, and he brings that example, purchase a lightsaber from Star Wars for $20, 70% under retail, then quote unquote, what could go wrong? He believes that if you were to build a portfolio of 20 collectibles and you have also an investment in the Ecomi token that in comparison, probably one to three of the collectibles would outperform still the Ecomi token and the rest of these collectibles more or less would underperform. He also agrees that the digital frames where you could display your collectibles could be a first step before the augmented reality glasses. However, as none of these frames have a VV integration yet, he didn't purchase one for his own collection. Next question is actually how he feels about the VV team and especially Captain VV is asking for for example, how he feels about the position of Alex G as many people were criticizing him in the past uh, for his performance as the marketing um, responsible or, and or leading the AMAs and going out talking to the community. And Dr. Prophet answers this with that. First of all, he doesn't know Alex G personally, so he doesn't comment on it, but he knows David, he is a very big fan of David Yu. He shares his vision. Um, he believes that David and Dan are extremely capable in the direction of developing um, the Viviverse, the Vivi app. And he also believes that Reese and Adam are extremely capable uh, to bring a good merge of the MCP and OUP. He also comments bullishly on the development or this merge of MCP and OUP. So in contrast to many people in the Vivi fam right now on Twitter and social media, he does not believe that there is a disadvantage for the OMI token. He also says that he likes the freshness of Mitch coming to the team and that he feels that with that, they are very Web3 oriented and he himself as a crypto OG is obviously wanting to go with Vivi and have Vivi going into that Web3 direction um, and not uh, staying or being stuck as a 2.5, Web 2.5 or Web 2 company. He also believes that in the near future, everyone will be a Web3 user but not necessarily everyone will be knowing that they are using Web3, that they are using just front end as they are used to. And in the back, the Web3 applications are rolling. The next question is also pretty interesting and came from the chat, um, was read to him live. And he was asked how he feels about the massive amount of money that he has invested into the app and uh, about the current status and the FUD that is coming, if he is in any way nervous. And he says that first of all, he is diversified and has not put in everything into Ecomi and Vivi, uh, that he has this high conviction that he pointed out in the beginning of the video. And also 
that he has a very long time horizon as he already had it when he invested into Bitcoin 10 years before that this 10 year time horizon also applies to Ecomi and Vivi for him. And he also says that he understands that this way of investing that he has is a luxury that not everyone has. And he also understands that many people get anxious or nervous about their investments over time because he says that at any point any investment with money can make people nervous so he um, has his diversified strategy never put all eggs into one basket but on the other hand he also says that he has not lost any conviction into the team and into the investment that he made into Ecomi and Vivi and um, that he doesn't see that this will change in any way. He believes that Ecomi and Vivi will have a great development, that millions and millions of users will be using the app one day or the project one day. And that especially in these times when there is a lot of fear and uncertainty and doubt that people sell too early. He believes that in this current situation, he is already sitting very comfortable um, on his back, he thinks that he has a lot of collectibles, but he also says that besides around 20 whales in the app, no one has enough in his opinion without giving financial advice. He specifically said that and explains that, but he says that current users that have not gotten a lot of collectibles yet should be happy about the very low prices and see that as an opportunity, as a chance to get in at very low or extremely low prices. He says that if sentiment was a little bit better and we were at another point in the cycle and the Darth Vader, for example, would cost $2,000, then many people would not be in the position to afford this one at that point in time. And he says that now what could pay off is to have the courage to say that this or that collectible could be a grail in the future where people would curse me when I told them how cheap I got it or how I got it when I got it. And he points out basically after every sentence that he is not there to give financial advice or to guide someone into an investment. So please keep that also in mind when I'm bringing this little bit recap translation here for you. They once more revisited the topic of interoperability and Dr. Profit points out that even if Vivi would go bankrupt, he doesn't see that um, the Vivi team would be that kind of people that would let users sit with these collectibles within a closed app. He believes that either another company would buy them because of all the first appearances and all the collectibles that are already issued um, by the app and all the track record that they already have. And on the other hand, he says that even if it was the last thing before going out of business, they would enable self custody and transferability for the collectibles in his opinion, so that collectors can move their stuff out. He has the strong conviction into the team and the trust into the team that, that this would happen. The next question is regarding whether the Ecomi token is a security or not in the opinion of, of Dr. Profit. And Dr. Profit answers that he believes that the Ecomi team has done everything to avoid that Ecomi is going to be labeled as a security as they have been very careful in his opinion with the communication that they did not advertise the Ecomi token as a financial instrument that would give returns in the future and therefore might not pass the Howey test and so on. So he is believing that the Ecomi token is not going to be labeled as security. He sees the overall development for crypto altcoins, for uh, the technology and the potential that the SEC in the US labels each and every altcoin as security as not so problematic as he thinks that the rest of the world will happily embrace 
crypto technology, altcoin technology will not label them as securities. And he thinks that the US will basically stay in a very big disadvantage there if they would do that and cripple innovation. He also points out that uh, labeling every altcoin as security is the absolute negative scenario. The middle case would be that there is somewhat a regulation kicking in. And he also believes that uh, at the moment, in general, this move to labeling altcoins as security is not going very far as, for example, Gary Gensler has put himself in a bad spot there in front of the Congress for the moment. So he believes that the entire story will drag out. In general, he believes that the SEC has been going after 50 projects, shooting every time, never suggesting a specific regulation and something that Dr. Profit always thought would be a security ripple. They were not even able to shut it down. They are dragging out the case against Ripple and therefore he believes if they cannot shut down Ripple and label it as a security and create a precedence with Ripple, they will definitely not be able to do it with Ecomi. In summary, he describes the SEC as a teethless tiger. The next question is where Dr. Prophet thinks Vivi will be in five to 10 years and where he wants them to be in that time frame. And he says that he doesn't necessarily believe that they are going to be the digital wholesale uh, like Walmart or Amazon, but that he would be pretty happy if they can dominate the digital toys industry and uh, therefore become the market leader in that segment and grow just in that specific vertical. He says there are a lot of verticals like music, like sports and, and so many others, not necessarily we can expect that Vivi will dominate and be the biggest in all of them. After the discussion went a little bit on about uh, the market share that Vivi could get in the $300 billion industry of physical collectibles and uh, they came to the conclusion that it would be enough for Vivi to gain up to like 5%, for example, of that entire industry. Um, Captain Vivi asks uh, Dr. Prophet if he would describe himself as a moon boy. And he answers that a little bit longer than expected and says that, or maybe he would call himself a moon boy. But on the other hand, he had a very high conviction in Bitcoin in the beginning, then he had high conviction in Ethereum, in Chainlink, in Avi, which seems to be altcoins that he had early invested into. And now he says he has that conviction also in Ecomi and Vivi. And he says this conviction stems from him going very deep in the analysis and ultimately then also believing in the team. He says that um, the point, the facts that are speaking for Vivi are one thing, um, 1 billion in turnover, for example, as a startup uh, is a very big accomplishment. And on the other hand, he says in terms of the vision where they could go in the future, yes, there he would describe himself as a moon boy. He is very convicted that uh, there is a bright, bright future. With regards to the cash out functionality in the app, Dr. Prophet says he was never really interested in the cash out topic as he has never used the cash out functionality until now. Of course, he would be interested in the cash out functionalities in crypto as he doesn't want to send any funds to a bank account. However, he wanted to see OMI to NFT, NFT to OMI since the beginning. And he said that he never understood why everyone was so eager to get the cash out in the first place. At least for him, it was never a topic. The follow up question goes in the direction whether 10% cash out fee is justified or not. And Dr. Profit believes that at the moment it's justified also with regards to the whole topic of 30% fees uh, on every gem that is being uploaded through Apple store or the play store. And he believes that in the future, this could be lowered to 5% or even 0%. And he also mentions that he thinks that in the future, Vivi should then 
sell a gem for more than a dollar for example for one dollar and thirty cents the next question is why do you believe um, in the Viviverse and this big vision of Vivi if they cannot bring up even a well-functioning search bar and every update takes weeks or a long time and is only basically one line of code and he answers that this is a fair question and uh, also is in the lines of reasonable concern with that said he thinks also that this is something that you could have brought in by basically using another service so that you have a well-functioning search bar um, he doesn't know any internal excuse why it is not working um, he definitely says that the search bar that we have right now is nothing that we can celebrate and he believes although he doesn't know the reasons that there is some mix up or something with the priorities that basically caused this to happen lastly he was asked from the chat um, how the dinner with david Yu was um, he just gave superficial information on that that he has been there it was a group of 10 people the focus was the ron english nft and ron english himself david Yu was apparently there with his son uh, I didn't know that David Yu had a son, but overall he says it was a friendly atmosphere and after the dinner in a steakhouse they had another Vivi meetup where almost no one figured out that he was Dr. Prophet. And lastly he has answered the question what in his opinion are the collectibles that are most valuable to him and he says obviously the first appearance of Batman on the blockchain which is the Todd Batman, the first Spider-Man and the first Darth Vader as the biggest villain of all times are his favorite collectibles in that sense and um, for the comics he says it's best to stick with the comics that have the highest value in the physical world as those um, also have shown to be the most expensive ones on Vivi, at least for now. He also argues that there's something special to the Risso Batman, because if you have already the common, the first appearance, the Todd, then you would also want, and many people therefore would want to complete the entire set, where Risso is uh, part of. And he also revealed that he is actually owning a number 15 Risso Batman that he got of of a specific incident that a user's account got hacked and Vivi compensated that user with a number 15 Riso Batman. That user has apparently sold in over two stations. This Riso Batman ended up with Dr. Profit. If you enjoyed this information, then please make sure to drop a like and also let me know in the comments below what you think about what Dr. Profit said in that AMA, although you couldn't hear it in original sound. I know that this cannot replace the original sound of an AMA and of that specific person and how they put their arguments, but I hope at least this brought some insight, some value about how the biggest whale right now feels and what his opinions are and how he sees the development in the space and which collectibles he owns and some other factors that might be important for you to know. Now, wherever you are on the world, have yourselves a great morning, evening, day, night or afternoon and see you in the next video.